All right, folks, welcome to the next episode of Calculus 3 with Rifat Bari. I'm an artificial intelligence researcher at the Morales Lab at City College of New York. In the last few lectures, we saw double integration. We saw how to do double integration over rectangular regions. And finally, we saw an application of double integrals in which we found the total amount of charge on a triangular lamina. Now, in the last lecture, we were introduced to triple integrals, right? We saw that a triple integral is integrating over not a region, not an area, but a volume on the XYZ coordinate system. So today we're gonna check out an example where we do triple integration, not over a rectangular prism volume, but over a non-rectangular prism volume. That uh, volume is gonna be restricted by a plane. So we're gonna have the XYZ axis, and then we're gonna have a plane which forms a tetrahedron, and we're gonna find the triple integration over that tetrahedron, okay? So hopefully you can see that I'm walking around in fall, and uh, hopefully that's gonna give in the right mood for this episode of Calculus 3. Let's go to the lab. Welcome to the next episode of Calculus 3 with Rifat Bari. I'm an artificial intelligence researcher at the Morales Lab, and today we're gonna check out a complicated example of triple integrals. So here's the problem today. Evaluate the following triple integral over the region R, V, Z, D, V. Okay, very simple problem, right? Um, the region R looks like this. You have your coordinate plane and your region is bounded by a few more planes. It's bounded by Z is equal to zero, which is the xy plane here it's bounded by y is equal to zero which is the xz plane so this is x this is y this is z the y is equal to zero plane is right here shown in yellow and finally it's bounded by one more plane which is x is equal to zero so x is equal to zero is going to be the yz plane right here so our volume that we're integrating over is bounded by these three planes and one more plane which is the x plus y plus z is equal to one plane that our volume of integration is bounded by is this plane which forms a tetrahedron in the first octant which is x plus y plus z is equal to one okay so it forms this tetrahedron in the first octant and we have of course our volume of integration is bounded by three other planes which is this green plane z is equal to zero it's bounded by this orange plane which is on the yz plane which is x equals zero this orange one is x equals zero and the final plane that our region is bounded by is this plane which is on the xz plane which is y is equal to zero so our region, our volume of integration is bounded by four planes. X plus Y plus Z is equal to zero, Y is zero, X is zero, and Z is zero. So now that we have an idea of what our volume of integration uh, is going to be based on, now we're going to try to understand how the triple integration is gonna work, right? So we know from prior experience, we're gonna come back to this blackboard. First, recall the definition of a triple integral. Okay, if I have a triple integral of f of x, y, z, dv, where dv can be any of six possible things, I'll just list a few of them to give you an idea. It can be dz, dy, dx, it can be dy, dx, dz, any of the six possible permutations of the three variables you have. And so what we're having here, what we have here is the limit, right? The limit as the number of partitions approaches infinity and as we saw in the last lecture this is made of three Riemann sums right each of them starting from zero number of partitions i j k and heading on to infinity partitions and we take this right and we take this and we multiply we take our Riemann sum of what we have f of x star y star z star right that's the that's the height of our little cube but remember that cube is going to have a length a width and a height right so it's going to have a little x a little element of x a little element of y and a little element of z okay and as our limit approaches infinity this delta x becomes dx 
this delta y becomes dy, this delta z becomes dz, and this f of x star y star z star just becomes f of x y z. Okay, so that gives you an idea of what we're doing here, and what we're now going to do is draw the region of integration, right? We have our region of integration as the following, x plus y plus z is equal to 1, okay? This is the plane that creates a tetrahedron in the first octant of our graph. So what do we have? Well, on the one hand, on the one hand, we have something like this. We have a tetrahedron on the XYZ plane. Right, here's our tetrahedron. And we have to draw a 2D sketch. What's our 2D sketch gonna look like? It's gonna look like what happens when you let Z be zero. When I let Z be zero, I'm just stuck on the XY plane, right? I'm stuck on this XY plane over here. So on this XY plane, what is my equation gonna look like? If I take out Z, I have X plus Y is zero, and solving for Y, I get Y is one minus X. What does that look like? That's gonna look something like this. So this is our region. This is gonna help us find the bounds, the limits of integration for our y variable and x variable. So this is gonna be y is equal to one minus x. Okay, so now we are ready to start integrating and we're gonna do that on the whiteboard. So we have the triple integral of z dv over our region. Okay, so let's do uh, z and let's do dz dy dx. Okay, so we have to find the region of integration, the limits of integration for our z variable. How are we going to do that? Well, we already know that x, our plane that's creating the tetrahedron in the first place, is x plus y plus z is equal to 1. And so solving for z, I'm going to get z is 1 minus x minus y. Now, this looks very easy, but it's saying something subtle, right? You can't just memorize what's happening here. What is happening here is that you have your tetrahedron, you have your tetrahedron on the x, y, z uh, coordinate plane. And what's happening is that if you start from the x, y plane, if you start over here and you start going up, 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 what is your z going to be bounded by? Well, it's going to hit it's going to hit a wall and what is the height of that wall the height of that wall is f of x comma y and what is that f of x comma y it's 1 minus x minus y so this right here is what's bounding your z so that's why this is going to be the upper limit of integration for z what's the lower limit it's just going to be 0 and so our z variable is going to be between 1 and 1 minus 0 and 1 minus x minus y what about our y variable well we saw on this blackboard that our y variable is bounded by the curve y is equal to 1 minus x because when you start heading upwards here you're going to hit this wall first and that wall is 1 minus x so that's going to be the upper limit of integration for y so just uh, writing it all out here x plus y plus z is equal to 1 setting z is equal to 0 puts us on the xy plane and so we have y is equal to 1 minus x and so the limits of integration for our y variable is going to be between 0 and 1 minus x. Okay? And the geometrical the geometrical interpretation of this is that you have you have this line 1 minus x and when your y value is changing, it's going to change, it's going to change, it's going to keep increasing and boom, it's going to hit a wall and that wall is going to be defined by this function. And so finally, what are the limits of integration for your x variable going to be? They're going to be between what? This value and this value, right? What is this value? Well, what's the x-intercept here? It's just 1. So your limits of integration for x is just going to be between 0 and 1. Okay, so now we're ready. We have our limits. And let me just go ahead and write out the final limits of integration uh, right here. We have, uh, we have x is between 0 and 1. We have y is between 0 and 1 minus x. And we have z is between 0 and 1 minus x minus y. 
and so now we are ready to start the process of integrating for which we'll come back to our blackboard so we have the triple integral we start at 0 we go to 1 minus x minus y those are the limits of integration for our z variable for our y variable the limits of integration go from 0 to 1 minus x because remember to find the limits of integration for y we set z to 0 and finally for x our limits of integration go from 0 to 1 and our integrand is z d v okay and we're going to expand this obviously so we're going to have 0 to 1 uh, 0 to 1 minus x and 0 to 1 minus x minus y uh, we can write z dz dy dx and the rest is very simple right the rest is just plugging this into your calculator i'll just do the first few steps integrate this with respect to z you'll get half z squared from z is equal to 0 to 1 minus x minus y dy dx from 0 to 1 minus x and 0 to 1 right you have two more integrals on the outside okay so what do we have here let's take dark green so we're going to have the integral from 0 to 1 the integral from 0 to 1 minus x of let's pull this half constant let's pull it outside right let's pull it outside we're going to get half out here and you'll have z instead of z i'm going to have 1 minus x minus y whole squared dy dx plug this into your calculator you're going to get a final answer of 1 over 1d4 and that ladies and gentlemen is it for this episode of calculus 3 we'll check you out in the next episode sponsored by brilliant.org head over to brilliant.org slash barry science lab for 20 percent off the ambition plus mko plus scaffolding equals me. we believe anyone can learn anything that's why our motto is memorization is a crime and that's why we partnered with brilliant brilliant transforms math and science into hands-on activities so that you too can understand everything from first grade math to e equals mc squared barry science lab and brilliant is your mko and will give you the scaffolding to expand your zpd until you become the next sir isaac newton or albert einstein visit brilliant.org slash barry science lab today the first 50 of you to use that link will get a 20% discount on the brilliant annual subscription. Don't, Don't forget, forget that, that you too can, can become the next Einstein. Einstein. So, so let's, let's fall in love, love with math and science. science.